Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explore, we're going to take a close look at a magnifying glass. <laughs> How about that? So what this is, is it's on CodePen, so you can find us on CodePen, codepen.io slash zimjs. CodePen.io slash ZimJS. And I'm looking at a magnifying glass. It's our latest post. Oh, if you come in, you'll probably arrive at something that looks like... Hmm, I don't know. Not that. That's where we are. How do I find this again? Trending following projects. Uh, maybe it's in here. So this is profile. There we go. So you might arrive at something that looks like this which has our interactive book here. You're welcome to come in here and take a look at the interactive book. And then some other examples down below. These are sort of featured examples. Uh, but what you'll want to do then is hit mm, public, I guess, something. Or, or no, you can come down and say view all pens. That's another way. And once you view all pens, then it's the latest pens, not just the pens that we're presenting. Kind of tricky sometimes to, to find that. Anyway, here it is, the magnifying glass. And what I'd like to do is take a look through this code with you on this Zim Explorer. We initially launched this with just the icon. As we roll over it, it brightens. And then after, once we had 50 views and one like, we decided, well, maybe people are misunderstanding it, not seeing trying out the icon. So we've added a... A message pressed to magnify and when you do you get a magnifying glass that comes up and then you can pick that up and magnify oh the food as well as other things like that you see how the magnifying glass tilts from side to side neat huh uh, one of our viewers pointed out that when we go over the green you see the black there's no green next to it and we just put the we just put we're we're magnifying this card and we're not magnifying anything else in here and we're not magnifying the logo or the little icon I can't even get down there. I probably could. And that's another thing. When we pick this up, this is kind of old school. First of all, we can't pick it up by the round circle because that would be putting your finger on the glass. Uh, next, when we pick it up, you see how it kind of jumps the it jumps so that it lands where your cursor is. I think now that I look at this, probably we don't need to do that. If we're not making it pick up by the circle, then we should just make it go wherever on the handle you pick up, it uh, it picks up. And that way we could bring it down farther because since it's jumping to the registration point in there, I can't uh, bring that down any lower. What about, oh yeah, so the edge, this very edge is also clickable, which would jump. Not sure I'd want to pick up the magnifying glass by the edge, but I suppose maybe we should let people do it. Anyway, easy enough to do. That used to be an old CD-ROM trick. We would do this kind of stuff at the dawn of interactive media. It seemed to be impressive. You know, you pick this up. Oh, well, you want it, you want it to go by the handle. Okay, so let's look into some code then and see how this is done. Oh, by the way, to get out of that, which is a little bit tricky, you press it again. I mean, that part of it's not tricky, but the tricky bit is how do you handle a magnifying glass? Like it might have been nice to click and have it just start following the finger right away, and that would be fine, and then click, and then it stops following the finger. Actually, that, that might make more sense, come to think of it. So we click on the magnifying glass, and all of a sudden the magnifying glass just starts following the hand. We could have done that quite easily. And then when we click again anywhere, it go, goes away. We've got it. Um, sometimes that's a bit claustrophobic. You might want to do other things, like maybe I want to go see this or something, and the magnifying glass is on. Uh, it's a bit claustrophobic sometimes to have something follow your... Um, hand also there's mobile to think of would that would that also work on mobile you'd click on it and then what would happen if you lifted your finger then i suppose you could click and hold down your finger and move your finger along it's possible anyway uh this is how it's uh, been done in this case you have to click that thing again click to make it go away and when you click it, it pops up where it was 
All right, that's about uh, all there is to that, I suppose, in terms of the usability. Oh, um, in terms of accessibility as well, this is for a recipe challenge where we've got a recipe layout. Uh, if, let's see, I think that might be hard to do. If, that, if underneath were HTML, it, you know, then it'd be accessible, more accessible, uh, but it'd be hard to overlay a magnifying glass and you'd have to almost pre-take a picture of it, like in, in production, you, you take a picture of your HTML, but then if the HTML wrapped or something like that differently, or if it was scaled differently, then it would look different. Anyway, so it would be tricky to combine a magnifying glass that is magnifying the HTML page. There may be a way to do it, like to take, I don't know, I don't think I know how to take a snapshot of an HTML page and bring it in as an image, all with code. But it's possible there might be a way. Uh, anyway, in terms of accessibility, Zim is accessible. So you could add this to the Zim accessibility so at least the screen reader would be able to read what's there. And possibly when you roll over this icon, it could say it will pop up a magnifying glass. But, you know, maybe you don't even bother. If they can't see, then I'm not sure how much use a magnifying glass is going to be. But... Um, uh, certainly for reading the words here, you can add that to Zim Accessibility. So we have mentioned that we haven't done it in this case, although it'd be pretty easy to do, it might be might be worth it. Um, but we did mention it down here at the bottom. Uh, by the way, there's accessibility and see the, the docs there for that. All right, so here's our code. We're, we're in CodePen and what CodePen does, just in case you haven't seen the Zim Explorer about CodePen, you're welcome to go look back at that. There's settings and under the settings, we have JavaScript settings. There's nothing in HTML and CSS, but in JavaScript settings, here we are, we brought in Pizzazz 2 for the little magnifying icon. This icon six is the, uh, is the footer icon basically. And here is um, Zim and CreateJS. So that is the setup. And then here's our HTML. And the rest of the HTML, there's nothing in here, nothing in here is just automatically done by CodePen to uh, prepare ourselves. We are using their Babel setting as well, which will convert this code with arrow functions and stuff to ES5 so that... <laughs> So the Internet Explorer primarily will be able to, to read it. And yet, if you come in with Internet Explorer on CodePen, it actually says, uh, get a better browser. <laughs> CodePen is primarily a site for developers. And, um, you know, some developers may be doing sort of more forward thinking things to, to give examples here. And uh, I think it just makes the whole experience, you know, nobody, I don't think anybody's coming in here. Uh, <laughs> in old, old browsers. All right, anyway, um, let's carry on then. We've got the Zim template. We've darkened the background, uh, or sorry, that's the, the, we've darkened the green in, this, in the stage color, but we've also darkened the background even further. So ever since we've added darken, lighten, two, two color and two alpha, um, the Darken and Lighten have been very handy. Two Alpha, very handy. Two Color haven't done it too much, but you can convert one color headed towards another color. And all those are very handy designs wise. I, I can't believe how often we're using them. So uh, there they are there. We're bringing in food.jpg and to get assets to work in CodePen, you need to be a pro to upload your own assets to CodePen. I can't remember how much that is. It might be a little bit expensive sounding, like $60 a year or something like that. That, what is that? Uh, 60 divided by 12, uh oh, is that $5? Five, yeah, I think so. Um, it's $5 a month that uh, we're paying there. Uh, well worth it if you're a developer, uh, certainly, you know, it's, it's well worth it. Think of it, $5 a month, what's that? Like a couple chocolate bars a month, something like that. You can do it. And CodePen is a good place for us. It's really our only social media for coders, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, yay! Um, right, so, lots of learning going on here, too. Uh, but anyway, you could, 
link off to uh, a place to get assets that as long as you don't run into cores errors. And there are some ways around that in Zim as well, but we don't encourage it. Generally, we're not supposed to be linking to somebody else's images necessarily without their permission. <laughs> and that's where cores has, has cross-origin resource sharing has come along. If somebody wants you in a faraway land to be able to use those images in your works here, then they can set their cores to, to allow that. But if they haven't, by default, it, it will run into permissions problems. Um, we have a way to get around that, but uh, it's, you know, that, that's, it was put in place for a reason, and so we don't actively promote the way around it as much. <laughs> Education, we sometimes want to use it for education, though, as we're teaching to just make things a little bit easier. Anyway, so we'll leave that for now. Frame dot on ready. Right, we don't need to go through all this. We've, uh, we're just wanting to get down to our code here. And here we are starting our page as a container. Uh, the reason why we're making a container is that we're going to magnify only what's in that container. If we wanted to magnify a green background, we would have no problem doing that. Um, we would, uh, let's see, what did they, we do here? We made a rectangle that's a par portion of the stage. We could just say new rectangle right here, uh, stage width, comma, stage height, comma, green. Oh, what is it? Green dot, well, uh, frame dot color is the way that we can get it with without, um, going up here and looking at it and repeating what we put here. Then if we ever change the frame, it will change down in here. Uh, dot add to. Okay, so there we go. And now if we run it, run. So uh, that was a two-step process for me. I don't want auto, let's see, how do I turn this off? That's just taking me to some information about it which is totally not what I want. And now I have to close down, so I close a tab, <laughs> bring up again, uh, F11, so we've got maximum screen here. Um, if we hit save here like that, uh, then we hit run. Sometimes these things happen automatically and I don't like it automatically saving my, my thing every time I run it. Uh, we're running into an error, it looks like. Oh, no, it's not an error. We added it to the wrong thing. Uh, we just made a background rectangle here and added it above the container that we're putting everything else in. <laughs> so uh, we want to make sure we add that to the page like that. So it's as simple as that. When we add two, it adds to the, the stage. And now I'm going to hit run on that. Uh, and there we go doesn't look any different, but what we've done is we've added a big background color that is the same, big background rectangle that's the same as the stage color. And now watch what happens when we magnify. Pick this up, and as I come over here, there it is. It's like magnifying. You know what? That's probably better, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know why we we just sort of threw the only the one thing in there, but now that I've got this in here, that's a bit more of a realistic effect. So why don't we why don't we keep it like that? Um, uh, what did we do with our container? We added it and we're animating it in just briefly. So that that's just normal animation there. We're animating its Y position. So we're dropping it down, but also a little bit of rotation as well with a back out under time. When we finish animating, we're going to call make copy. So let's have a look at this again. When we run it, in it comes and it kind of comes down at the same time as angles in and does a little back for us. That's the arrival. All right. So this is all asset making. No point really at looking through that stuff. It's uh, doing a picture, a bunch of labels, the little icon, there's the pizzazz icon. It's magnifying, it's white, we're locating it. We're expanding that so that uh, we can click on a little bit more of it and also um, around the, the black edges of it in here, which wasn't done before. 
We're adding a little hub to it, so you could have put that into a button. You see how we're hovering over that when we roll over it? Could have put that in a button, but this is probably an easier way to, to make um, a button out of an icon. And then when we tap it, uh, the tap will add the little finger for us. We also made the label tappable to t this thing called toggle magnify. Down below, magnify is a new container. So what are we doing now? We're making the magnifying glass. When we click, there it is. When we make the magnifying glass, we didn't set the visible to false. So that would look like this. You can control S for a save. There it says saved and run. So there it is. Uh, we have some problem about the order of operation, I think, and that's why we're seeing only the gray here. But as we're making the magnifying glass, we want to see it as we construct it. Uh, the way we've made it is it's a container. Here's the dragging on it. We'll come back to that. We make a mask circle, and that's inside there. And we make a glass circle. The glass has, uh, it's a bit bigger, and it's got a border as well. So you see this border right here? We also see that stuff uh, because the mask is a bit smaller, so when we end up masking the picture, it will um, it will fit inside here, and it looks like the magnifying glass has this border. There's the handle. We're using a gradient on the handle for a nice quick gradient uh, handle effect. Doesn't that look real? So we didn't bring that in as picture. You could have done that, but we made it with code there. Just took uh, a couple minutes. And then we're centering that. Anything else that we want to look at here? Yeah. Okay, the registration point is the center of the handle. We don't really have to do that. Uh, if Here's the drag. We're, we're dragging all of it, so that means when we drag it, it drags the whole container of the magnifying glass. And reg true is the part that's snapping it. And so I'm, I'm just thinking about it. If, if we want to stop that, we can set this to false for now or delete it. On top, false means we don't want the whatever we're dragging to come up on top because we're putting on top a copy of the picture underneath. So if, if, if we every time we picked up the magnifying glass, it would end up coming up on top of um, the picture that we're magnifying. And well, we're magnifying this picture, but we're really magnifying a, a clone of the picture, as you will see later. And we've got the slide turned on. All right, so I will set the visibility there, and let me just check this one more time without the snapping of the registration point and see if we like it better. So we press, there it is. We can't click there anyway. We could click on the edge, and that looks a little bit awkward to pick up the magnifying glass from the edge because it's not tilting. And what about when I pick it up here uh, or here? There, there's the missing icon. We, we'd have to throw the icon in there as well if people try, try to magnify the icon. Oh, and that's pretty bad, what happened there. That's the picture coming up on top of the icon and then revealing the icon. So it looks like the icon was made after the magnifying glass and hence is on top of the magnifying glass, but it's underneath the picture that we're showing in the magnifying glass, so that hurts the effect there. Anyway, we could get around that by quite easily by just adding that to our footer. So let's let's do that now. So we go down to the icon, create icon. Uh, I think that returns the icon. I can't remember for sure, but um, let's put it in a variable const icon is equal to that, and then we can say icon dot add to page. Like so. And add to when you swap when you swap containers. Okay, well that didn't look too good because we animated the page in, and then the icon seems to be gone. So hmm, we animate the whole page in. Oh. 
Uh, right, let me put that in pause for a second. I just had a thought. If we put the page in there, will it not over go over top of the icon? Um, we have a green. The green stuff is part of the page, but it looks like we're fading in the icon. Uh, the icon's on top of the page, so it doesn't matter. The green stuff's animating in behind. But if we put the icon in there, so we have to just wait a little while. May as well throw a, a timeout in there. We we could do it. Well, okay. We put const icon, and what we'll do is we'll move this up. I think we can do this. We'll move it up into where the animation finishes. Remember that there's a, a, a when the animation finishes, here's the animate we call make copy right there. And at that point in make copy right here, we've copied the page, we located it, and we will also icon.add to page. I think that should work. I was going to say when we add two, if it's already positioned, its X and Y will stay. And sure enough, its X and Y stayed. Now we can pick this up and it should be part of what we're magnifying. If we can get down there far enough, I'd have to pick up on the edge of the magnifying glass here to make it go down far enough. There's the one corner. No, I don't see it there. So I wonder why the icon didn't get added to the page. Okay, copy icon. Oh, uh, we did it after we cloned the page. Okay, of course. So remember, in the magnifying glass, we're not we're not seeing it. So copy is equal to page dot clone. So we just have to do we have to add the icon to the page before we clone the page. So what we what we saw here is working so far in that you see how what we're magnifying is above the icon and therefore we're not seeing the icon um, kind of come over top of the magnifying glass. All right, let's save that and run it here. Welcome to Zim Explorer, huh? And that's what this is all about. We have no particular agenda with Zim Explorer. It's just like, let's look at stuff together and see what happens. And it can get complicated, it can get buggy, and that's okay. It's a Zim Explorer. So, uh, here we are, we pick it up. Uh, I may as well pick up the magnifying glass from here again and I bring it down. And there it is. There's a big... So that has been uh, copied, cloned. And we haven't seen that part yet, so I guess we'll have to come back to it. I'm still trying to think if, if this is what we want with the, uh, the magnifying glass. It's a little bit awkward to pick it up by the side and have it tilt like that. It would really only tilt that if you brought it from the handle. We could try and uh, make it draggable not by this part and only by the handle. So put the drag on the handle and then really drag the outside. You can do that. It's a little bit tricky to do. It's sort of like you have to do it on a mouse down. So you say handle dot on mouse down, drag the, the whole thing, the, the mag. And then handle dot on press up, or, or you can use press down and press up now. Isn't that nice? We added a press down that works just like a mouse down. So anyway, we could add a press down, and on the press down it says drag the whole on the press down of the handle, drag the whole uh, magnifying glass, and then on the press up of the handle, no drag the whole something like that. Anyway, I think I think that works. Uh, or we, we live with it. This allows us to pick up the magnifying glass by the very top edge and therefore come down and see that. Maybe, maybe that's okay. Let's run this again and see how it works from the start. That's in there fine. We press that. Magnifying glass arrives in the middle. We move it like that. We press that. It goes away here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess that's all right. So... Um, that way we're not getting a jump. I kind of like picking up the handle and not having it jump to the registration point. Therefore, uh, let's go backwards on that. You saw it here, though, that that can be done. We can snap to the registration point. So basically right in here, there's no point in doing that. And make magnifying glass, and we're no longer going to put the registration point handle snap. Okay, that's like an old trick, but I don't know if I really like it. 
and therefore the reg false we don't even need because that's the default. There you go. A little bit bigger for us. Yeah, and a little bit smaller for us. Okay, so let's run, save it, and run again. It is kind of annoying when the saved button goes right on top of the run button. Okay, it's still working. Yeah, I mean, yeah, do you, do you see what's happening? As I, I don't know, you know, now that I do this, as I'm moving from side to side, it's no longer following my mouse. It's like my mouse is floating in the air, whereas before, when it snapped to the registration point, that's where it tilts about. Okay, I'm sold. I'm going to go back and do it how we had it. I think that that disjoint between the cursor and, and the handle is worth the, the small snap. So here's the small snap that I'm talking about when I pick it up. <laughs> okay, what did we do wrong? True. We didn't quite undo far enough. Ah, there we go. True. So reg true. We save that and we run it. And here we go. You ready? So there's the snap. Like that, that little jump right there. But now when I pick it up, it's like it's rotating about where I'm holding it. And I prefer that. I didn't like picking it up here and having it float on my cursor. So, okay, we'll keep it like that. And it's not so often that we get to do that little trick. Uh, magnifying glasses. <laughs> You know, from my historical interactive media building, that's really the only time, or one of the only times that I can remember doing that trick is on magnifying glasses. So it was almost like, a, all right, we got a magnifying glass, let's do the trick. And I agree. Okay, we'll keep that trick there. Woohoo! And uh, what else is happening down in here, though? Let's go back into the code. We have, poo, to do to do, what's that? Duplicate the content and scale it. All right, yeah, I think that's where we got to. So when the animation finishes, we're going to duplicate the content, which is now includes this icon, uh, because by that time the icon has animated in, and it includes the green background now, so some more things there. Um, and as well as the picture and the text and the button. so all that all that's basically any, everything that uh, that's on the stage is in content. I can't remember if we can actually clone the stage. We might be able to as a container. Uh, shall we try it? Nah, because we got everything is added to the 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 page. So there's there's the page we made. We'd have to go in and delete that, delete that, delete that, delete that, delete that, delete that. <laughs> By the time I explained what we'd have to do, I could have done it. And and then um, make a copy of that. Oh, and then we got the animation. In. Yeah, okay, so let's forget it. We, we want to animate the stuff in anyway, so we may as well uh, put it in our page that we have here. So we've made the magnifying glass, great. We are setting the visible to false of the magnifying glass. That wasn't how we first started. We first started by setting the, uh, by removing it from, remove from. But we found with the masking, when we added it back and then masked, we were getting a flashing of the, of the object that we're masking. It took just a, like a fraction of a second to, for the mask to work. And that's a little glitchy. I think we've run into that kind of thing before. That's hard to hard to fix. Uh, generally, it works out okay. It's just um, it wasn't in this case. So we turn to the viz, and viz is the same as mag dot visible. Viz is new to Zim. Visible equals false. So there's a visible property, but uh, you would have to come out of chaining to apply it. And so we added the short chainable method, I think in Zimcat, 
and maybe Zim 10, but I think it was in Zim Cat we added the viz short chainable method. So we're making use of it there. We're saying, okay, now that we've made the magnifying glass and know how big it is, let's center it and we'll just set its visible false. And that way um, the we don't get a flash when we are applying our masking. Okay. I can show you what that looks like if you want. We would can say dot remove from here. That's I usually work with a remove from rather than a vi uh, the viz false and true, but now that we made that chainable, that's probably just as easy. So there's a remove from, and that means when we add the magnifying glass, wherever that was, mag, that's on the press down is something different, toggle magnifying glass. So there we are using the viz falses. We'll just change this a little bit to say um, mag dot add to probably would we'll, we'll do well just in case we'll center it here but we wouldn't want to center it every time because I think we're good add to because uh, we want to when we bring back the magnifying glass we want it to go where it last was so here it is with an add to in there for the magnifying glass this may break but we'll give it a go Uh, didn't seem to work. This may be causing the problem. Copy mag. Maybe this is being run as well at some point. Uh, mag dot remove from. got a stage.update. We've got the add to. Did we ever add? Oh, um, well, the add to should add it to the stage. Let's have a look here. Wherever the other one is. Do, 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 do. Container page here. Visible false, make copy. That's the copy is visible false. Here's the remove from. Uh, we've got the mag. Let's try no remove from and see what we get. Oops. <laughs> double semicolons instead of double slashes. So there it is. Remove from. No add to. Okay. Do the add to right. Locate the copy. Hmm. Copy dot viz true mag dot add to. And we got a stage dot update there. I'm not sure why it's not showing up. F12. No error. Well, it might be in the wrong position, I guess. Let's just try a center. But uh, we haven't changed its X and Y, so I would have thought that that would have been fine. So when we uh, click here, boop, it disappears. That's this part right here. The copy, well, I don't even know what's going on with copy. Um, we don't see it in the magnifying glass. It must be a stacking order issue. And then mag.visibleFalse. Oh, that's commented out. Mag.removeFrom. Mag.removeTo. And it's not there. Huh. So it's either underneath something or it's... Well, there's the center. It must be underneath something. Oh. Maybe it's under, right, okay, so we got a backing on here. Yeah, it must just be underneath all of this stuff, so we'll center it. But wait a minute, if then centering it should bring it up on top. I don't think we, we need to do that. Copy viz true. Huh. 
So that means it would be off of position, but if we make it very strange. And it's not going to come back. Yeah, that, that won't make a difference. It's not underneath the thing. Huh. So if it's not underneath the thing and we're centering it, it doesn't have a weird, well, this is centering it right here. We're masking it. Could it be underneath the copy? And the copy is the, no, the copy is never the same size as what we're viewing. Wow. Hmm. It's a tricky one. What do you guys say out there in Explore Land? It must be the visible. This is a visible true, there must be a visible false going on somewhere. There must be. Okay, so um, maybe we've missed one somewhere. So just to be careful, let's set the visible true and add it. Save that. That would make sense if it's visible is false is somewhere, somewhere else. And press again. No, nope, it's not the visible either. Okay. Um, zog mag dot x comma mag dot y comma hmm, what else let's zog mag dot type okay do 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 so I press to magnify and now we can uh, see the comments here. Oh, not comments. <laughs> Wrong comments. See the console here. Um, I've talked to these guys. Oh, it re redid our thing. Background color. Um, that's not helping. Uh, I've talked to them about this. We have this special thing that turns uh, Zogs certain colors. And it's using style. And it works on the console, but it doesn't work on the code pen console, which is too bad. So let's try this again, run it. Also, opening up the console seems to have um, rerun the project, which I didn't want to do. Click, click, not there. Uh, so we can F12 still, though, and see the, the other console. Actually, that's OK. Well, maybe that's it. Uh, of course. Uh, so Azog solved it. So as soon as we bring in a zog, it's not zogging. So we're not even calling this because it's right here. This thing is saying, if it's visible, we're using that to toggle the, um, the magnifying glass. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. So there you go. Even after years of coding, we can still get tricked by something not running. And finally, when we went to the zog to debug that, uh, we noticed that this stuff's not even running. Usually that's in a function that I would think of that, but in this case, it's a conditional. Just forgot to, to check what the conditional is conditioning. So we need to change the conditional here. We'll copy this line to um, ask if the mag has a parent. So if the mag, if the magnifying glass has a parent, that means it's on the stage. And that means we're going to want to turn it false and remove the magnifying glass, or turn the visible false stuff. Okay, so we don't need a zog anymore there. What else did we do? We can just use the add to like we had before. And we don't need to do the visible, I don't think. So we'll back out of all that stuff, and it should be working as we hope. What an exploration. <laughs> I'd rather not that kind of exploration. Uh, but anyway, whatever. Oh, we got that showing up to start. There it is turned off and turned on again. Um, let's turn off the showing to start, which seems to be adding this in the wrong order. It's adding the, the magnifying glass on top of the picture that we're looking at or, or something like that. There's some something that's going on when we add that magnifying glass at that time. So we run here. And I can't even remember what we're testing anymore. So we press that. Oh, the flash. <laughs> that reminds me. OK, did you catch that? Ready? Watch this. We're going to press this, and you'll see the background flash. Boop. 
and then we get the, the masking. Although the masking still messed up due to some sort of adding, <laughs> this is at some point, we've added it, we've removed it, why aren't we seeing the, uh, the picture in there? We saw it briefly, but for sure the picture is in the wrong order. The picture needs to be on top of the magnifying glass. So let's see what's causing that. Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't even looked at that part. We haven't even looked at the picture yet in the first place and the masking yet. So before we try and debug that, we can. Uh, that was the flash that you saw. Um, the viz was able to solve that. So let's back out of what we had there. A bunch of undos. Boop, boop, boop. And bring back the viz. That was an add to. And I think that's it. Let's have a look. Maybe not. Come up here. Mag center removed from visible. Uh, not quite. There we go. Okay. This is false. And let's have a test. This will no longer flash. We're using, yeah, that was good. And our visible's working. All right, let's see how we did the masking though. That would make sense. We were still working through our make copy. We've added the icon to the page so that it can be uh, magnified now. Although can it? I can't quite get, yeah, I can't quite get down there. So we don't need to do that anymore. Boop. Uh, if we did that, we'd have to explain it. And I don't necessarily want to explain it right now. <laughs> and if we scroll right on down, that means we don't need to put this into the icon anymore. We just create the icon and it gets put there. Okay, back up to where we were. Making the copy. So the copy is going to be a clone of anything that we put into the page, which now includes the green part. That is better. And we're scaling it up 2.5. If we wanted to, we could scale it up 4.5. I have to remember this is live. Somebody could be coming in and looking at this. And here's the magnification that they would get. Anyway, 2.5 is what we chose. I like how you can always tell that we bracketed properly. We probably tried two, we probably tried three and decided that 2.5 was the scale that we wanted and that's indeed the case. I did run those at the different scales and decided that um, this one was the one that I wanted. Okay, so I call that bracketing. I mean, that's what it's called in photography. You sort of bracket either focus or uh, or other settings. And I use that term when I'm teaching coding as well, or design in general, really. Is this font too big? Is this font too small? You don't say this font is okay. You sort of say, let's make it too big. Let's make it too small. And then you sort of get, get it right that way. You could do that if you want. Same with moving things a few pixels, a few pixels that way, too much, too little. Okay, there it is. Um, we're using set mask to the mask that we've made. The mask is the, the circle in the back there. So here's what that looks like if the mask were only 94 in radius. <laughs> Again, somebody's gonna come in and say, what the heck are you doing with that? So I better quickly undo that. <laughs> Something like working with uh, live code, huh? Uh, let's just check that make sure. Yeah, okay, so we're back to normal. Uh, you can see that this little dark ring there. Uh, well, when can you see it? There's a little dark ring and a light ring. We put that in there. If it's only a light ring, sometimes it looks odd when it's against light. If it's only a dark ring, it definitely looks odd when it's against dark. So we've got both a dark ring and a light ring in there. Um, and yeah, That's what we just chose to do there. We've set true. True means make it dynamic. We're moving the we're moving the mask. 
if you move the mask, set it to dynamic. Let's see what it looks like if it's not true. I think that's the case. Sometimes drag will handle it, like a drag will, uh, a mask will know if it's dragged, but a mask inside of a container that's being dragged, I don't think it knows it's dragged, but let's check, run that again. Oop, yeah, there it is because we've already positioned the, so the mask, the mask is not moving. It's kind of working, but it, it's, it's not dynamic. It's staying there. So this one adds an extra layer of processing uh, because uh, processing the mask is, let's set that back and save it and then start talking. Processing the mask, it, it takes processing. It's actually, you know, there's a fair bit of stuff going on there to mask. And if your mask is static, then we won't do, we won't continue processing. We'll just like do it once. But if it's dynamic, then we have to keep on doing it at, 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 all the time. So there you go. It's all the time the mask is being set there. And then we're setting the visible of false the dot no mouse. If you want the glass to be clickable, this is what that looks like. Did I run that? And again. <laughs> so now the glass is clickable, but that's what happens. Because we're jumping to the the handle, and that's that's a little bit awkward, isn't it? It's like, no, 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 don't don't touch the glass, jump. So we may as well make uh, the glass was coming in as non-clickable because we put the picture on top. So this is the copy. If we put the picture on top, we can't click through the copy. Let me show you what this looks like without a mask first, and then you'll get the idea. Save. Not run any. I don't even know if we're going to be able to operate this. Maybe. Yeah. There we go. Because our click jumps this to the handle. This is what it looks like without, uh, and there's the magnifying glass right there. So we're dragging the magnifying glass. Because we have the no mouse, we're able to click right through this big picture. But that picture's there. When we mask the picture, it only shows up in the circle, but we still can't click through it. Can't click through the mask, but we can click here without a problem. So even if the no mouse is on, we can we can still click down here. But anyway, um, that's why we're no mousing that in the first place. But that's neat, isn't it? To see the, the picture move like that. And we haven't seen how to do that yet. And we're about to, to get there in this Zim Explorer. I like to keep the explorers about an hour. And we're approaching that, 13 minutes, 12 minutes left. All right, so we run that again. I've turned the mask back on, and now uh, we're masking that big picture that's moving. Okay, so we're, we're nearly there. Let's uh, pop on down. To make the angle go, that's optional. You don't have to do that. For instance, if we commented these things out here, and it looks like that one right there, probably. I think we can run it without the, the tilting of the magnifying glass. Okay, and that's what most people would probably do is I have this magnifying glass and I'm holding it. Ow! But I'm starting to get carpal tunnel because my wrist is bending strangely. Is <laughs> There we go. So this is optional damping of rotation. And we've added some we've added some damping to <laughs> to that as well. Uh, we're using the proportion. So the proportion setting we have is zero as the base. Did I not put what that is there? I usually would. This is base min base max uh, target min and target max and then the next one is the damping which we left the default so we've got zero to stage width zero to stage width that's our mouse 
that's the base. That's what's that's the uh, the input in a sense. And the output part, the target, what we want to apply to, is minus thirty degrees to thirty degrees. So let me save that because I think people are still seeing it straight up. Right, did I do that right? I think so. If you don't put the damping there immediately, then here's what would happen. Run that. Nothing. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, it's not working. Bring that, that second part there. Run it. Um, there, you see that? So it was fine to start. So basically, the damping value that we've passed, that we haven't done any any damping values. Right, so click. And it's go. It started. The damping assumed that you wanted zero zero, and as soon as we click here, it goes. Oh wait a minute! Not zero zero. This location. And so the rotation is damping from zero zero, which which would be like oh, the magnifying glass over here. That's what it starts off as, and when we click it, it then tr quickly tries to damp to this location, like that. The rotation wise, not not the not the. Um, so watch again. Run. So damping doesn't go there immediately. So when I click this the starting value of damping is zero, zero, I guess, is here, because we're only damping based on the x. So here, zero. And that means it would be angled to the left. But as soon as we click, it's like we jump from the zero position immediately to the stage width divided by two. You ready? And that's what that's what that's doing. Now that it's a stage width by, divided by two, the damping has the right value. So when I pick that up again, it doesn't it, it doesn't do that same problem. It does a little jump as I try and center ridge, but anyway. Um, it, maybe you don't know too much about that. It's hard to say. Uh, damping is an equation that will not go directly to a value, but goes partway through to a value. So what we need to do to solve that is say, hey, this damping equation please immediately set the value of stage width divided by two. That's where my, my thing is starting. And then the equation will go, okay, the last place I was, or the last value I was, was the stage width divided by two. And so I save that and run it. So it thinks I'm starting there. And so when I click, the rotation is is already in the center there, and that's good. That's for proportion damp, which is doing both the proportion and adding damping. Uh, you can you can have a damp that has nothing to do with proportion. I wouldn't have these things then. In the damp, the very first value that you can put in damp is the starting value of the equation. In proportion damp, it's I think, I don't even know if we can do that. I think we got to do it with this immediate method after. I'm not sure. I don't think it's a parameter, but I know there's more parameters to uh, the damping. We may have put the, um, the starting damp value at the end. I can't remember. Should we go look? Ah, it's not worth it. Okay, so uh, we've just jumped there immediately. We've got a ticker. Whenever we are doing damping like that, and as, as we drag, we don't want to do it on a, a, a drag. We want to do it on a ticker. If we do it on a drag, what happens is as soon as, or a press move, sorry. If I do it on a press move, as soon as I stop moving, it, it goes, eh, it, like it just stops right away. It, it would do the same thing as the mouse up here. And it doesn't look very fluid. So uh, what we're doing is when we press down on the magnifying glass, we're adding a ticker. When we press up on the magnifying glass, we're removing a ticker. Press down on a magnifying glass, add a ticker. Press up on the magnifying glass, remove the ticker. Um, what's in the ticker, so the ticker is going to be constantly running. It's basically setting the rotation of the magnifying glass to 
the converted value of the frame's mouse x. So depending on wherever the frame's mouse x, it's going to convert that x position to a rotation between minus 30 and 30. It just does a little proportional equation, which is kind of easy to do when you've got zero in stage width. It gets harder when you don't have zero there. Uh, then you have to, you know, you have to start thinking about your equation a little bit more. But what's nice is with proportion, you've got both uh, proportion damp and proportion. Here's what it would look like without damping. Uh, let's see, that's a proportion equation. Oh, I've got an error. New rotation damp. Oh, there's no immediate. I don't think. Okay, so let's try refresh. Uh, proportion damp wouldn't have an immediate method. So there we go. This is without damping. Without damping, it's not bad, but um, it's like it's locked on. It's quite, not quite as natural. So do you see how I go sideways? It, it's instant. Which you may want, but here it is without, with damping. So we'll undo that. There's the damp is back in there for proportion damp, and we've got the immediate in. Okay, save that and run it. See, it's a nice touch, isn't it? It's a little bit more smooth. Well, it's a lot more smooth. Just kind of keeps going a little bit as I, I stop. It doesn't go there immediately. Nice. Okay, very professional. So you do have, mm, you've got just proportion. You've also got just damp. Uh, and then there's proportion damp, which is the combination of the two, okay? So we're down here and both damp and proportion use convert and proportion damp. So they all work in this kind of the same way where you don't do the immediate value, you do a converted version of the value. And we're also locating the copy. If we don't locate the copy, which is sort of a poor man's magnification or a poor person's magnification, then you get this. So now we've added the copy, but uh, you can tell that it's not, the effect is not very good. It, it magnifies, yeah, but the location of what we're magnifying isn't, isn't meeting up properly. So that's why we have to do a little bit of an extra effect on this, and that's in the locate copy. Okay, so here's locate copy, and is the last thing we have to do. We've looked at toggle magnify. Yep, that's it. So this is the last bit that we have to look here, is how do we locate that copy at the right place? And uh, it's, the concept's kind of straightforward. Whatever part of the picture is directly in, in the center of our, of our glass. So say I take the center of the glass and I put it at, right at the corner of the, uh, oh, this is the broken version. Uh, let me run that again. Um, say I take the center of the glass and I put it right at the corner of the picture, like that. Then when the center of the glass is at the corner of the picture, I should see the corner of the magnified picture here as well, which we do. Same with if I take the corner of the glass and put it at the corner of this, and pick that up and take the corner of the glass and, and center it right there on the corner of that, then I get the corner of this. If I put this the center of the magnifying glass at the little magnifying guy here, I guess that would be it. There it is, I put it at, I should be able to click through, and, oh no, I can't, okay. So uh, you get the idea? 
Um, okay, so how do we do that then? Well, uh, basically we need to find out which point on the picture is underneath the center of the glass. That's a little bit harder. It's not the X and Y position of the glass because we've moved the registration point to here. So if we asked for the X and Y of the mag, then it would tell us this value right here. But we want the center of the, of the glass. Okay, so how we can do that is we ask the magnifying glass to locate, oh, let's, um, let me, when we show it right here, mag.viz, we will also say dot outline. And let me show you how we built the magnifying glass. Uh, darn, we put the picture on top. Okay, I won't make the copy visible. Picture is on top and it's it's uh, taking away something that I want to show you. Okay, so here's the magnifying glass. When we first started building the magnifying glass, we added a circle to it. So it was a container with no dimensions and we add a circle. Since the circle's origin is, at the, is, is here in the center of the circle, that's where the container's origin is. We added the circle to the container Therefore, the container to start would be a box around the circle with its origin in the middle. That's what the container would look like. And when we add other things to the container, uh, the, the origin just stays right there. We then moved the registration point. If, if we didn't move the registration point there, and there it is jumping to the registration point. If we didn't move the registration point, the registration point would also be there as well but it's not. So we can't use the X and Y of the registration point to find out what that is. But that's zero, zero within the magnifying glass. That's what that X means. That's where the zero, zero is inside the magnifying glass. So if we look here, we're taking zero, zero, and we're asking, well, in the page, which is, which is this other object here, in the page, where is zero, zero of the magnifying glass? So where is the magnifying glass's zero, zero position inside the page? Oh, sorry, this is no longer the page. The page is actually uh, includes the green stuff as well, which means the same size as stage, probably means we could have just done local to global there. But anyway, this would be the safe way to do it. Then what we want to do is we want to put the registration point of the copy at that location. So we're putting the registration point of the copy at the point in the page that we have identified, X and Y. So a local to local will return a point with X and Y values, X and Y. So we've set the registration point and now we want to put that, we want to place the page at this location on the stage. But where is this location on the stage? It's not, it's not the X and Y of the magnifying glass, but rather it is the local to global of zero, zero. So here's zero, zero again on the magnifying glasses and local to global is now let's see if the yeah and I think we should do it that way just in case not not all like we might not be magnifying something that has a zero and zero of the top left it does now because we put that big green border back in but before we put the big green border on it the the container the page was really oh actually maybe it was stage with stage let's have a look yeah, it is. So we put it stage. So we'd probably be okay not doing both of those. Hmm, but you might not be. So what should we do? Should we? Uh, the, the point is we probably could have just said locate it at the. No, we still need that point. Not the ridge. Yeah, we still need that point, so we'd still have to do a local to global, but it's just this we wouldn't need necessarily. 
the page point would be 0, 0 on local to global. Let me just see if this works and we'll bring it back. Local to, two local to globals and save. Run. Oh, get out of my way. Oh, get out of my way. <laughs> Click. Hmm. Bring back the viz. Oh. And we're at an hour and five minutes, so we're nearly there. And it's, it is indeed still working. Okay, but like I said, that's, uh, that's as long as the thing that you're magnifying is at zero, zero to start, it probably is better to make sure that, um, just in case it isn't, this is how you could do it. That's fine. Alrighty, that's a bit of exploration of local to global, global to local, and local, did I say local to local? <laughs> Whatever, local to global, global to local, and local to local. And those are always one of the hardest things that some um, coordinate systems, one of the hardest things, especially for beginners, to understand. Uh, we did a whole uh, pen on that, by the way, and that maybe is a good place to end this explore. But just making sure that we're and then we're locating at that at that center part. So that's moving the picture um, so that it its location, its registration point, which is what's under the thing, it has been moved to what's under the thing. Tricky, huh? Uh, remember, that's of the magnified picture. So that's the magic that makes it work. Yay! And now let me just uh, take you to back here. Oh, wait a minute. Before I leave, I'll get rid of that outline. There we go. And also bring back the viz. Is that all good? I think so. We better check for sure. Press to magnify. All that looks good. Pressing. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So we're good, and can we turn it off? Yep. All right. So heading back to Zim, it used to be that we'd have the topics listed right in here, but I think they looked at this and said, oh, we've got uh, four things here, four things here, and just didn't want to do five things. But I would have looked at it and said, we got three things here, we got four things here, let's put five things there. <laughs> anyway, unfortunately, they've moved the topics down into the community. Uh, which is too bad because there, there we are. We've got a Zim topics on um, on CodePen. It just doesn't get as much as many views as it used to, unfortunately. And here are some examples. And in these examples, we have one that talks about registration points right there. Uh, there's positioning, but we also have one somewhere. Jump to it on. Global to local, local to global. So let's see if we can find those. There it is. Einstein, relativity, code pen, stellar scientist. Okay, so this, this code pen right here, you can see why global to local, local to global is confusing. <laughs> anyway, we got it all on here where we talk about um, the coordinate systems uh, relative to other coordinate systems. You'll just have to have a look, a look through this if you want, even on rotated things. Isn't that neat? And that was a lot of work to make Zim do this automatically without you having to think about it. Because with CreateJS, you had to think about it on everything. On dragging, if you were dragging something that was inside a container, you had to apply global to local or local to global or whichever one or local to local. We took that away from you. <laughs> oh, aren't you sad? So if you're dragging something that's in a container and if that container is rotated and all that kind of stuff, or if you're scaling something inside of it, you don't have to worry about that. We, we handle that for you in Zim. And that's why if you take a look at drag, Zim drag has got a lot of stuff in it because there's a lot of complexities that get added to make that work. There's also a lot of features to drag, but uh, anyway. Hope you're happy. Yay. Uh, and this has been a Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract. Oh, and I'm so happy that you were here for us this whole time. If you are indeed, we've been exploring. Hey, do you like our new microphone? 
Not only that, but we have just moved the microphone off of the desk. It was clamped to the same desk that we were typing on, and even though we had a tray that we were typing on, we could still hear this boom, 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 boom. And now we've uh, anchored it. We screwed something right into a, right into a filing cabinet on the left-hand side here. Uh, so hopefully that's nice for our voice as we explore and bubble and do all the other things that we do. So come join us, zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to see you. Ciao.